Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. This time for the week ending the 23rd of July, we take all the latest infos and official newses and put big wheels onto it and make it into a vehicle of news. Uh, the schedule report, the schedule window for the Evocati PT and live builds remains unchanged this week. They have discovered a handful of new bugs and um, they're focusing on um, finishing off the mission givers, inventories and kiosks now. They've completed the vehicle and ship and ship cargo transport st systems, which is fantastic, as well as the um, multifunction displays and star map app they've all been completed everything looks like it's being wrapped up now and hopefully no other blockers will occur the current release windows are aimed at an evocati release between the 20th of july and the 3rd of august a ptu release between the 7th and 18th of august and a live release between the 21st and 25th of august which is gamescom the Tumbrel Cyclone is on concept sale until Wednesday the 2nd of August. It's a two-seater all-terrain four-wheel ground vehicle that comes with um, in five modular flavors ranging from $40 to $70 during its um, concept sale. The base variant is focused on general use and cargo transport. There's a turreted variant as well which replaces the cargo area with an extra seat and more armor as well as a sized one gun uh, the recon replaces the cargo with scanner suites and uh, the ability to deploy nav beacons on the ground so you're ba placing like waypoints and scouting stuff out with this one uh, the racer is a racing variant that gives you better maneuverability and extra boosts of speed and there's an anti-air variant as well which is the the expensive one it has anti-air missiles which are awesome it's our first anti-air vehicle in game showing off some of the combined arms that will hopefully be in the game soon we are going to have track vehicles we are going to have tanks we are going to have lots and lots and lots of ground vehicles it's also available in various packs during the sale and they've paired up with various ships like the um terrapin um i did a video looking more closely at the cyclone cell so please check that out i also stated incorrectly quite possibly that the terrapin could carry the cyclone because i was very tired and they paired it with the cyclone and you know basically the cyclone is smaller than an urza in length and width the terrapin however is tiny so unless the terrapin has changed in size it's not going to fit please check out radiant flux's video where he tries to literally fit it in uh, in blender to see if it works uh, links below this week's sneak peek was an urza rover speeding across dunamar's surface it shows us some of the cool vfx from the uh, tail lights and debris and dust that are happening um, and help provide more authenticity to the moons of 3.0 let's check out what the foundry 42 frank that studio have been doing over the last few weeks throughout all the different departments there's been loads of polish and finalization of systems and optimizations and all that sort of jazz for our star citizen alpha 3.0 oh, that kind of goes without saying although we did just say it vfx have been improving the existing systems for 3.0 as well as doing a final polish and tests on vehicles and ships there uh, they've added new airlock effects for both the high-tech and low-tech airlocks the weapons team have been getting the gemini l86 ballistic pistol bearing p4ar and um, all the reworks basically for the legacy weapons done for Alpha 3.0. For ships, they finished the Klaus and Werner laser repeater size 1 to 3, and the Apocalypse Arms ballistic scatter guns size 1 to 3 again, and now they've started on the size 4 to 6 um, laser repeaters there. TechArt have finished various animation implementation tasks for the usables and cinematics, and have continued to debug weapon animations. Adjustments have been made to weapon rigs to make them feel more realistic. They now have better support for exporting objects from Maya and have been working on ground alignment for the game as well. Programming have been working on the weapon system 2.0 as well as doors, airlocks and elevators getting them working and extra polished. They've added the ability to hide weapons from the first person view in ADS or in down sights. They can now apply weapon skins and have the tech to support it in game ready now so they can apply weapon skins to weapons. Hopefully we'll see that in the game pretty soon. Uh, the AI guys have been working on the mission um, system features for Alpha 3.0 as well as squadron 42 episode one they've adapted the mission broker to support multiple players accepting the same mission at the same time as well as asymmetrical missions for multiple player missions and lots of things happening that, that will have crossovers for missions and that sort of stuff they've added support for takeoff and landing of ai ships including the landing pads um, ship hangers other ships and more they've added quantum travel functionality for the new ai subsumption stuff um, subsumption ai now also supports using nav splines uh, and the new entering exit set behaviors uh, more importantly or very importantly they finished the second buddy ai sprint this is basically the functionality for having an AI companion that will intelligent assist the player in combat and follow you around. The engine team have improved the handling of GPU crash reporting, as well as started on the new road system and tool sets to work in conjunction with planetary tech 
the terrain there, features and structures, so that we can have cool twisty roads everywhere uh, and that it will kind of place them intelligently. Uh, the uh, level design guys, they've been working on a gameplay pass for the room system for Levski to ensure that the players won't suffocate in random places. They are now working on Hurston's landing zone, Lawville, which is the next hero landing zone that they'll be building out. The QA guys have been busy testing 3.0, but also subsumption, gravity, elevators and more. Uh, the system design guys have been testing out um, Levski with a full AI population or huge amounts of AI um, and tweaking behaviours to avoid overcrowding in areas. They've been working out how they can make it as full as possible uh, as well, stress testing servers with max AI populations to make sure they can get the best possible performance and, and what's kind of supported and, and test that out and see that there as well as trying to optimise it for the future. There's been more work on scenes for Squadron 42 uh, with VFX and the cinematics guys uh, and they're working on the uh, render to texture displays uh, and holographic rendering so we can see some cool 2D and holographic rendered displays. Uh, lighting have been focusing on finishing touches for 3.0 with colour grading for moons, moonlighting and various polish um, and there's been various polish to um, systems and environments for the persistent universe in 3.0. They've also added new areas and locations to Levski, a new shop and an admin office, uh, as well as doing a final pass on garages there. Uh, now they are working on Arc Court, Purston and procedural cities, or at least looking at the R&D for them. So there was a featurette as well, focusing on kiosks and the economy for Alpha 3.0. I've done a video focusing on that, including an overview, links below. Every month we give away a ship for July, it's a Nox Q. All you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel channel and comment on any of my Star Citizen videos during a month. Do you have any questions about the latest news or about the, the Nox Q or about the Cyclone or Alpha 3.0 or Star Citizen's development in general? A special thank you to my Patreons who allow me to create the amount of content I do. Thank you so much. If you are interested in becoming a Patreon, there is a link below. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the verse.